All right, stand by everyone. Here we go. Hello everyone, Roturo here with another episode of Blue and White, my video review, video diary, let's play of Football Manager 2014, specifically with the Vancouver Whitecaps in Major League Soccer. Uh, today's featured match is going to be a Cascadian Derby, Vancouver-Portland, always a good match. Vancouver off to a rough start uh, this season. We are sitting uh, in 7th after 4 games played, 1-1-2. One, one, and two. A bit of a cup hangover, it would appear, although Portland with seven games played up at 16 points, 5-1-1. One, and one. Commanding opening performance here by Portland to start the season, and why wouldn't they be? Darlington Nagby really showing his uh, pedigree there. Diego Valeri feeding him, as you would expect, and this young DP of Juan Bustos, a Costa Rican, is uh, looking to be a good pickup for them. Which brings us to uh, the first note for here, us here in Vancouver. We need a striker. So, of course, you may recall from earlier in uh, a couple episodes ago, we sold Darren Maddox for the princely sum of $5 million, a deal I would absolutely make every day of the year. But the uh, the problem is that we are left with Caleb Clark as our top striker, and while he's projected to indeed be a 3.5, which is fantastic, he's not there yet. Andy Johnson, our depth signing from the Charleston Battery, again, potential 3.5, not there yet. Uh, Manuel Tapia, one of our draft picks, potential 3.5. You see where I'm going here. We got a lot of potential. A lot of potential in our striker striker core. Nobody's there yet. And this depth signing of Roberto Nani has just been a, an unfortunate pickup. I think we'll be cutting him as soon as we can find something better, which brings us to our search for a new striker. So, since we have cash to burn, I am not afraid at all of dropping cash on whoever's out there. And we've got some good options here. Lots of good options here out across the world thanks to expanding our scouting region. And I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of like Le. We've been looking at here a 19-year-old playing with Feyenoord over in the Dutch leagues. But here's the cool part. Uh, sure, Feyenoord is sitting at first in the Eredivisie, and that's all well and good. But uh, this kid's out of contract. I could sign him right now, pick him up at the end of June, not even have to worry about... Uh, about paying a transfer fee, and I oh, couldn't have 16 finishing at the age of 19. He's projected to be a five star. He's currently a four star. He blows our striker core away by a country mile, and I am more than willing to make a move for him. So let's see if we can go ahead and approach to sign him. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good minimum for your release clause. I have no problem with that. If someone offers me 15 mil for this kid, I'll take it. Uh, I don't want to pay you quite that much though. Let's uh. Drop down your fee. DP salary? Yeah, I don't have a problem with the DP salary. He has earned it. Absolutely has earned it. But we'll see if we can uh, chop it down a bit. Promising start? Yeah, 205 is pretty good. But I think you can come a little bit lower than that, Mr. Uh, Edilson Nunes. I want le for a little less than that. Oh, I'm a horrible person. Uh, okay, good. That's fine. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's uh, get you to take a little more of a hit. The salary's coming down, which is good. Shoot. Well, that was fast. Still, uh, he's a DP. I am going to pay him what he's worth. Excellent. We have our option here for a striker. Now, I do want to get somebody I can sit on the bench as well. And perhaps picking up Hernan Barcos, 31-year-old, as a free agent. Would he be good? Would he play for depth money, I think, is the important thing. Yeah, nope. Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. Uh, da -da -da -da. Landon Donovan's injured. Nope. Not like I'd be able to play for him anyway. That's a non-starter right there. Hmm, 28-year-old. Problem is that DP salary, I I can't really afford. I'm gonna pick up any depth strikers. I can't afford anybody who's currently making uh, a bajillion dollars, roughly. Um, where is wage? Salary, there it is. At most, this guy can be making. Let's see here. If we up this to four grand. What do we got? Oh, we got some decent options here, including some free agents. Marçal, 13 finishing. Azizinho, 
Nope. Oh, he's actually pretty good. 26-year-old. That'd be a good depth pickup. 3.5. He might ask for a little more than I'm willing to pay, though. Contract's up at the end of the year. Yeah. I don't know. 1.7 million. I want to break that kind of bank on a depth player. Oh, this, uh, ooh, hello. Free agent, 27-year-old depth signing. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think I would like to take a shot at you, sir. Uh, I'm not paying you designated player money, though. <laughs> I'll pay you depth money. I'll pay you good depth money. But not more than that. No, unfortunately, you are not getting a DP contract. It's just not happening. Oh, good. Good, good, good. At least he's locked into a senior contract. Not doing it. All right. Nothing there. So you can see the the search for a good striker will be ongoing. But if we can confirm Lay and he takes that offer, we are going to be uh, rocking and rolling here. All right. So while that clicks away, let's get to the matches that have been happening since last time we checked in with the Whitecaps. Uh, a couple of matches to look at here. First of all, we did have a friendly in the middle here. We had a, actually a long break here, full uh, week between matches. We had a nice friendly with the Victoria Highlanders. Played a B squad, came up with a 2-2 draw. A bit of an underperformance, if I'm being honest. Would have liked to have seen a win there. But uh, that's all right. We had two actual matches to look at. First off, a 2-1 win against FC Dallas. If you can believe it, that's our first win in league play <laughs> of the year. A 2-1 win, a goal from Steven Betisher, which tells you what kind of match it was. And then Manuel Tapia, our draft pick, with the winner. And this was at Toyota Stadium. This is an away win as well. Always a good sign early in the season. Let's take a look at the goals. Starting off with the second minute strike by Steven Betisher. Starts off in the back. Brian Revivo to Fuada Bukit. Bukit gets the ball forward to Lopez. Alejandro Lopez. Goes all the way across, looking for anybody. <laughs> Betisher charges up, realizes he has space. Just stays in the box himself in top corner. Thank you very much, Steven Betisher. Fantastically taken strike there. From the right back, who's known more for his crossing than his striking. Mauro Diaz, though, with a nice little ball forward. Javon Watson with the redirect. And that's how Dallas equalized it up at the 12-minute mark. The winner would come, though. As I said, from the draft pick, Manuel Tapia... As we are looking, I believe this was in the second half, the start of the second half, actually. Leverone plays the back pass. Weatherstone, our first round Generation Adidas goalkeeper. His ball forward, Shane O'Neill, Andrew Lopez, Fuada Bukit, Ivan Estrella, Stephen Betisher. So Tybert. Back to Keat. Estrella to Tybert, and he plays a wonderful little cross ball for Tapia. Great job by Tybert to set up the youngster. A goal on his league debut for the 2-1 win. Not a bad start at all. One of the league match to look at a 2-1 loss away to the Columbus crew. Federico Iguain scoring both goals. Not a shocker that you give Iguain an inch. He takes a few kilometers. Uh, not the best day on the back for either of my left backs. That actually has been a serious problem for us here. Alejandro Garcia and Brian Revivo, despite being, by all accounts, excellent left backs, have just been routinely exposed by their uh, by their attacking counterparts, both of which are uh, need to really pick their games up here. Caleb Clark did manage to get an early equalizer here, or a quick equalizer after Iguain's first goal at the start of the second half. Unfortunately, they could not hold on to that one all draw, and Iguain with an 8.8 .8 controlled the game. First off, this free kick, it's a laser of a free kick. Like, that's just delightful by Iguain. You can't allow him to take those kind of shots. Uh, thankfully, we didn't have to. Franco Lewis to Caleb Clark. Nice job to find the far post in tight. Great goal from Caleb Clark. That's going to do wonders for his confidence. Unfortunately, Columbus with 14 shots. They only got three on target, but that's that's fine because they only need to score twice. 
But a uh, quick uh, pick up there by Baker off the loss of possession. Eagle Eden goes around his man and just, oh, another two delicious goals from Iguain. I mean, not much you can do when Iguain decides he wants to win the game. Uh, that's a, that's quality right there. Quality I would love to have if Jason Holt wasn't injured, but one thing at a time. Elsewhere in the league, it's uh, been an interesting run into the form for Canada as well. Canada, of course, you may recall the U23s had their moment in the sun. They, uh, they've they qualified for the Olympics. They won over Costa Rica 2-1 to advance to the final and automatically qualify for the Olympics as a North American or CONCACAF entrant. Goals from Manny Aparicio and Caleb Clark. Caleb Clark, the late winner after Victor Zamora tied things up. Here we go with Garcia and Izaki. A lot of, uh, lot of content here that uh, plays for Vancouver, and why not? Garcia, nice cross for Caleb Clark. But Manny Aparicio picks up the header by Aguilar, and Aparicio, the TFC product, opens the scoring in the 53rd minute. He goes down 1-0 to Umania's corner. Finds Villalobos back to Aguilar. Aguilar going out wide. Nice little back ball there for Umania. Umania to Zamora. Zamora takes the shot, floats it over Gantar. Uh... Perhaps Gantar could have gotten to that one, but regardless, it was a well-weighted strike. But the winner came not very long after that. The Tigos thought they were going to extra time. It was not to be Caleb Clark with the dagger to end the Tico's hopes of appearing in the Olympics and securing my goal of coaching Canada at the Olympic Games. Lewis to Clark, a Vancouver connection. Clark makes no mistake. It's the winner. Costa Rica thinks this was offside. Let's take a look and see here for ourselves. So here's Aparicio. Now Lewis may be offside here, but he does tag up before the ball is actually kicked. So when the ball is kicked, Lewis has tagged up. All right, that's fine. Then his ball there to Clark. Is Clark onside? Yes, he is. It's a good goal all around. And Canada is off to the finals against Mexico, a rematch of the group stage. Unfortunately, it was not to be as, uh, whoops, try that again, as the Mexican U23's El Tri managed to get their victory to win Olympic qualifying. The one-all draw was not to happen, a straight-up 1-0 win for the U23's Angel Gonzalez with the winner in the 12th minute. And it was a very close match by all accounts, but Mexico just too much quality on the day. Let's take a look at the winning goal here by Angel Gonzalez. Angel Gonzalez. Why is that so hard for me to say? Jorge Espericueta, uh, one of my uh, former 23s had a great game. Eric Gubo Torres did well despite being heavily fatigued. Espericueta pulled a lot of strings. He needed well to start this goal. Romano. Looking at White for Rodriguez, there's the cross, there's Gonzalez, all alone on the far post. Can't leave anybody that that open for that long. Bit of a rookie gaff there for the U23s, but it's alright because they are still in the Olympics. So good job, U23s. On the international front for the senior team, we have a friendly for the senior national team as they prepare for their World Cup qualification in the second round. Had a friendly against Guatemala, a 3-0 result, a solid result with Rob Friend, of all people, a hat trick for the veteran target forward. Uh, interesting starting lineup here. We got Kevin McKenna in for at least one swan song as he has announced his retirement. Borean, great in net. Edson Edward and Ashton Morgan. Our fullbacks, but they, they showed up and they performed, and good job for them. Uh, Mark Larkin getting another uh, chance here with the Canadians. Uh, decent team here to call up as well. Lars Hirschfield, Kylian Roberts, Kevin Harms, Andre Hainaut, Andres Fresenia, Marcel de Jong, Mar Patrice Bernier, Nicholas Ledgerwood, Russell Tybert, Sean Seiko, Dino Jelasek, and Ivan Velastugui. Velastugui. He's a new gen. I'm sure that's how his name is pronounced. All in all, a good showing here by the Canadians. A 3-0 result is certainly a bit of a bit of flattery. Bit of flattery there. But uh, they, they did well to assert themselves over the Guatemalans, and that is really all we can ask for. So off the opening kickoff, Guatemala looks to be in control. They've got the ball on their right side of the pitch. Everything's looking okay. 
But then, but then, Chilapas gets tackled by Osorio hard, and off goes the counter the other way. Friend does well to grab the ball, passes the defender, puts his head down, and hammers it. That's how you open the scoring. The Canadians in the crowd are loving it. Guatemalans are in shock. Borjan with the goal kick in the second half. Edson Edward to Rob Friend. Nick Ledgerwood. A rare national appearance for him. Sean Psycho to Rob Friend. And Friend, who had been skipping defenders all game, does it again to not his second. And not but a short while wait later. Short while later. There we go. Rob Friend would cap his hat trick. Again, not the most likely candidate to cap a hat-trick at this stage in his career, but we are happy for him, and goodness knows that kind of form could only serve him well as we prepare for World Cup qualification. Sean Psycho, Jonathan Osorio, to Sugui, who plays in Friend. Friend, who's supposed to be the target man, says, hey, I'll just score it myself, thank you very much. Three minutes later, he has his third goal. 3 nil Canada. And that's all she wrote. That brings us to our featured match today, a Cascadian derby, Vancouver-Portland. They We really need a result here. It's going to be tough going away to Geldwin Field, now Providence Park. Still Geldwin Field and Football Manager 2014, though. It's not going to be easy. So again, as I said, Revivo averaged 6.2. Garcia averaged 6.58. Both of them just really not showing up, which is honestly quite shocking, considering how highly regarded both of them are. Not quite sure what the deal is with that. Let's get to the match. We can give Revivo a shot here. I think after this game, if we still have problems, there will be some harsh words had with both of them because they need to step up their game big time. Uh, Bustos, we need to keep an eye on him. We know he is a big deal. Diego Valeri, we know he's a big deal. Keep an eye on him. Nagby, uh, something of a big deal. Kind of, sort of. Please keep an eye on him. Teal Bunbury, uh, not rated so highly. Uh, we can afford not to be hard on him. And Will Johnson, yeah, we know he's important. Let's, uh, let's not kill him, though. I uh, need him for the national team. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's go out here. Let's, let's shock the world here, everybody. Portland's riding high. They think they're kings of the mountains. I beg to differ. Quinones finally back into full fighting form after his early injury. He's ready to go. He's ready to show himself. Let's see if he can boss the midfield like I want him to. Portland in there. Green and white. Vancouver in there. Blue Revivo with an early interception. Good job to start off the play on the Vancouver side. Quinones from possession there, but uh, play has warped back down to Vancouver's and Nagby to Will Johnson. Tyson Wall having moved pretty far up from his defensive spot, actually. Valeri's long ball is grabbed by Gantars. My voice cracks a bit. Diego Valeri does that to you, folks, I tell you. Not looking good here. Uh, Portland getting way too many chances. We need to be a little more respectful of their ability to... Oh, nice tackle there by Mane on defensive duty. Not giving away a penalty right to Eckersley either, which is very nice. Schuma, Bustos, and Valeri. Two high-powered playmakers for the Timbers with the ball. Bustos, Schuma, Revivo brings him down. And that's going to be a card for Revivo. Seven minutes in. Oh, no, he just gets a talking to. Oh, thank goodness. He must have pleaded his case successfully. Johnson. Free kick is well wide. Okay, we got to do something about this here. Because this is uh, this is not good. I think we need to pass into space, get wide, and drop deeper. Alrighty, let's see if that helps our situation a little bit. That's just a little bit actually. Good. Just getting a bit of a warning here. Yeah, look at this. We've picked our play up a bit. That's good. Bustos gives it away to Alderson. Mane now on the left. Goes to the center of the park. A little back into Quinones. Estrella. Quinones. Caleb Clark 
Nobody there. Clark just gives it away. That's not good at all. Actually, I am kind of telling him to run at the defense because that would have been a much better play for Clark just to run at Wall and Ka. Nagby's shot is wide. Thank goodness, yeah. Run at the defense, please. All right, seems to be holding us well. Oh, for Vivo. Yeah, for Vivo's coming off at the half. Can't have this. Spotty, spotty play from what's supposed to be one of our big signings. In fact, the fans are getting a little bit upset at the Revivo signing. He's supposed to be a lot bigger than he is. Gotta say that. Oh, my goodness. Teal Bunbury from distance shaking off two tackles to pot the goal. That's uh, that's kind of embarrassing. All around. So Bunbury shakes off Leverone and Alderson who can't... Oh, my goodness. The clearance bungles off of both of their legs. That's just... Bush League, both of you. If the Nagby gets himself a card. That was atrocious. Just absolutely horrible. Uh, Garcia in for Revivo. That was just not good at all. Pick the game up, please. Good. We do not deserve to walk out of here with a 1-0 loss. A one-all one road draw would be excellent. I would absolutely love to see that. Good. Johnson's on a yellow. Portland really uh, getting onto the foul train here, which is good. Uh, Tybert. All right. We need some options here. And Clark's not getting it done up front. Uh, ooh. Who do I want to put up front? I think Estrella actually is my best option here. I'll put a Zaki in the middle. Give him a taste of the Derby. Beta to Estrella. Brought down by Johnson. Is that a second yellow? It is! Will Johnson gets himself a red card. And suddenly Vancouver have been handed a lifeline. Half an hour. 11 men to 10. Okay. 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 Make him pay. Little close header. Nothing doing. And on the counter, Rodney Walls is off to the races. He opts to just punt the ball downfield. Probably a good idea. Gander will send it right back up, though. Also, Izaki. Nice little flick header from Izaki. Doing well, the youngster. The young academy product. Quinones to Estrella. To Tybert. Tybert will take it himself. Massive rebound that nobody can get on. Oh, my goodness. Gotta bury those. Tybert. Tybert. Looking for Leverone near post. Can't find him. Bunbury will knock it out of play. Alright, 70th minute. We got one sub left. We're starting to show signs of life here. I think we're going to swap here and bring on Miguel Montoya in an attacking role. Just because he's got that skill set. I want to test him out and see if he's decent with it. Mane for Montoya. Ah, damn it. Zaki. Betasher. Of course I have to make that sub. And then Estrella gets injured. Of course, Tybert on the left. It's got space, but that was abysmal finishing from the Canadian. Okay, control isn't enough, guys. Get forward. No dropping deeper. Thank you, Gantar. That would have been embarrassing to concede again. Oh, tired. Come on, guys. Throw everything forward. All right, still a chance. Betasher to Estrella. Into the center. Oh, nothing doing there. No power on it. 
Garcia for Izaki. Izaki needs to do something. Crosses, nobody there, and Valeri will start the counter. Bunbury, out wide to Darlington Nagby. Valeri just holding possession, and Portland will escape with a 1-0 victory. Oh my goodness. Well, it looks like Vancouver's rough start to the season will continue. Vancouver with that loss down to 8th place in the West. The Cup hangover is real. <laughs> the MLS Cup hangover is real. But we don't have to worry about that for long. We have more important fish to fry, namely getting a result in the CONCACAF Champions League against Aguila. That's going to be our focus for next time on Blue and White. My name is Arturo. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you like what you've seen, please be sure to subscribe to me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Arturo, or on YouTube, youtube.ca slash Steel Swords. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at that Arturo guy. Once again, my name is Arturo. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. And hello, Ryu Vash. Good to see you again. I don't know if you're much of a soccer fan, Ryu Vash, but uh, I can tell you right now that was embarrassing. No reason whatsoever to have lost that match. Road draw would have been perfectly fine. Ugh. Man. I don't like losing. I definitely don't like losing Cascadia Cup matches.